All right. Sometime before this morning, you should have gone to the website and printed out the NEMA enclosure classifications, and I want to talk about those this morning, among other things. Why is it flashing? All right, this NEMA, this information sheet comes from NEMA, National Electrical Manufacturers Association, and it describes the different NEMA enclosure types. So let's talk about those. The simplest one is NEMA 1. Almost all equipment is NEMA, at least NEMA 1. And NEMA 1 just means that the enclosure is to protect uh, against stupid people. It's going to, all it's going to do is going to be a metal enclosure that provides so that a non-electrician won't reach up and touch open contacts or open energized uh, bus bars or anything like that. So all it does is protect against stupid people, theoretically. But you know what they say, every time you... Uh, come up with a new and improved uh, idiot proofing system, they'll come up with a more new and new and improved idiot. So sooner or later someone will defeat this thing. So you can open the equipment and get into it and people that are not supposed to do that do that fairly often so they can defeat that. It's not very hard. Let's talk about type 2. What is a NEMA type 2 enclosure? for indoor use to provide a degree of protection to personnel against access to hazardous parts, that's NEMA 1, to provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of solid foreign objects, falling dirt, and to provide a degree of protection with respect to harmful effects of the equipment due to the ingress of water, dripping and light splashing. Now we have to talk about a couple of terms. So this is dust proof or dust tight it's one of those things right and it's also waterproof or watertight now we need to remember which is which okay and I want to tell you that if you buy a cheap waterproof watch and you stick it and immerse it in water that it's going to fail because water will leak in okay what it means is it, when it's waterproof is that if you take a shower with that cheap watch, most likely it'll just steam up a little inside and it'll w keep working. It won't interfere immediately with the operation, which is what, it, what this classification is saying. Okay, it's not going to do it any good because it's not completely protected. Okay, so I'm going to give you a phrase to help you remember which is which. You've probably heard this phrase before someplace, some some other time, but tight is right, okay? Tight is right, and when it comes to waterproof and rainproof, watertight and dust tight and rain tight means that it's impervious to, for instance, a hose being splashed at it, straight at it. That's not what we're, what we're talking about with type 2. This is dust proof and dust I mean dust proof and rain proof and uh, what else do we have here waterproof so it's waterproof but like a cheap watch that just means that it will fall on it and it most likely won't get inside it might okay if you take in other words if you take an enclosure that's NEMA 2 and you mount it on a wall, and you bounce water off the floor into the bottom of it, it's going to get in. All right? It's going to get in. So if you take that same equipment and immerse it in water, it's going to fail. Well, it won't fail, but it's going to get wet all inside. Okay? Now let's talk about type 3. Okay? Indoor or outdoor. So now we're talking about a different kind of classification to provide a degree of protection against personal against. In other words, we're going to provide against people touching the parts. Okay, that's NEMA 1. Provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of foreign, foreign uh, objects, falling and wind-blown dust, 
wind-blown dust. So it's not just dust falling as it normally does, but a wind-blown dust is going to be protected against to provide a pre degree of protection from respective harmful effects of equipment due to the ingress of water, rain, sleet, or snow that will be undamaged by the external formation of ice on the enclosure. So now we're talking a higher degree, right? So we might say that three, type three, is water tight or dust tight because now the wind blowing it in from different angles or the water coming in at different angles is not going to harm it as much. Everybody see that? Okay, and ice can form on it and it doesn't harm it. Okay, so it's more, It's now it's not perfectly dust tight or water tight, but it's more water tight. Okay, 3R. Enclosures constructed same thing to provide a degree of protection for the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of solid foreign object, falling dust, dirt, to provide a degree of protection with respect to the harmful effects of the equipment due to ingress of water, rain, sleet, snow, and that will be undamaged by external formation of ice on the enclosure. Now, how is that different from three? And what you did may not have noticed is three R is talking about rain that's coming in at a steeper angle. Did it go too far? Yep. Okay, three S. So we have several threes. All right. Enclosure constructed indoor, outdoor, provide a degree of protection, personnel, and so on and so on. To provide a degree of protection with respect to harmful effects of equipment due to the ingress of water, rain, sleet, or snow, and for which the external mechanisms remain operable when ice laden. So what do you think the S stands for? Three S. How about snow? Intended for snow environments. Okay. And then the three RX. What is RX? I wonder what RX. Let's go down to the bottom and kind of cut to the chase. It will be undamaged by the external formation of ice on the enclosure that provides an additional level of protection against corrosion. Corrosion. And that will be undamaged by the external formation of ice. Again. So three RX is not only snow resistant, but also it's going to not rust right away. So when you see something that is 3RX, you expect it to be made of stainless steel or plastic, right? Okay. Now, 3SX, we thought that S was for snow, right? Too far. Okay, let's get down to the bottom again. Provides initial level of protection against corrosion and for which the external mechanism remain operable when ice laden. Okay, kind of the same thing. And then type 4. Oh, too far. Now, four is a different classification completely. Enclosure can start either indoor or outdoor use to provide a degree of protection, personal against access to hazardous parts, in other words, stupid people, to provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of solid foreign objects, fallen dirt, and wind-blown dust. So it's dust tight. To provide a degree of protection with respect to Harmful effects of equipment due to the ingress of water, rain, sleet, snow, splashing water. Now, and hose-directed water. Okay, this is a new thing. Now, if we take a fire hose and bounce the water, and let's say this thing is set up at, say, three feet off the ground, and we bounce water off the floor with a fire hose. Now the, now the water's coming from the bottom, and the top and the sides at extreme pressure, right? And 4X will prevent water from getting in. So now we're talking about really rain tight, right? Now we're talking about really rain tight. 4X is really rain tight, water tight, dust tight. Undamaged by external splashing of water and hose directed water. Now there are places where you can plan on them Cleaning the room with a fire hose. If you go over to Farmer John over here on Soto Street, there are certain rooms where you walk in, and at certain times of the day, the walls will be covered in blood and guts and just junk everywhere. And how do they clean that up? With a fire hose, and I am not joking. And if the electrical equipment in there cannot stop, 
cannot stand being blasted with a fire hose and better not be in that room. So if you're setting something up for an equipment, some kind of equipment for a room where they're going to blast it with a fire hose, it's got to be at least four NEMA 4 rated. Now there's 4X, and X before was some kind of corrosion resistant, right? Let's look, go down to the bottom of this thing and look at, so rain, sleet, snow, splashing water, and hose-directed water, and so in other words, it's watertight. That provides an initial level of protection against corrosion, and that will be undamaged by the external formation of ice on the enclosure. So now... It's a very watertight device that's corrosion resistant. And there are lots of places where you might have to put that in. That place where Farmer John's going to blast it with salt water with water every day. Okay. That you might want to use a 4X. NEMA 5. Oops, too far. Closures. Let's pull this down a little bit. For indoor use, to provide a degree of protection, personal against, in other words, still protected against stupid people. Provide a degree of protection against equipment inside, enclosure, against ingress of solid foreign objects, fallen dirt, and settling airborne dust. Lint fibers and flyings. This is a new thing. Lint fibers and flyings. Because lint fibers and flyings are a hazardous location. One of the three, we're going to talk about the three hazardous locations and their three subcategories in just a minute. You're going to memorize that because it's not very terribly hard. But NEMA 5 is the main thing you want to remember that is it's fibers and flines. Fibers and flines is a technical term. If I take duck feathers and I throw them up in the air, a handful of duck feathers, what do they do? Do they fall right back to the earth? They float down they go left right fall down to the ground right and that is known as a flying anything that you can float throw up in the air and it kind of pauses in the air now while it's flying down to the earth that nice casual flight down to the earth is it surrounded with lots of oxygen or lots of air it's got lots of air around it it's now extremely flammable you can take any dust in the world almost any dust in the world, well, let's say a ground um, grain of almost of any kind, and if you take a handful of it that's really finely ground, so it's a, just a very light powder, and you throw it in the wet air and you ignite it, it will burn. It will probably cause a small explosion. And there are grain mills that you'll see in OSHA class where the grain mills are big um, block buildings, and the concrete blocks are three feet thick, five feet wide, three feet tall, and they're blown across the street. There's a news report where there's a about a five ton block out of a out of a silo is blown from about three stories up across the street to the parking lot on the other side of the street and it lands on a car, another couple of them land on another building and causes a lot of damage. And because they didn't have type five enclosures in their equipment, and they should have. Okay, type six. Um, let's go down to the bottom. And how, here we have, okay, can't touch the, the energized parts protect against falling dirt, and then we go down and we have hose-directed water in the entry of water during occasional temporary submersion at a limited depth. In other words, if you dip this thing in water, probably won't hurt it. It's pretty well sealed. Now we're getting seriously watertight, right? Okay, so NEMA 6 is going to be able to stand a short-term, short-depth Dip into the water. Okay? That's the big... You know, so when you print this thing out, you might want to highlight this. Okay? All these differences as we go down. You want to print out these differences because we're going to have a quiz sometime soon on these NEMA enclosures. And you're going to need to know the differences. So where do we need a type 6? 
okay, where it might be dipped in the water. Now let's look at 6P. I wonder what 6P stands for. Post-directed water and the entry of water during prolonged submer submersion at a limited depth. So P is prolonged immersion. So 6 is immersion, and 6P is prolonged immersion. Okay? How long? Well, I don't know. Additional level protection is corrosion that will be undamaged by external formation of ice on the enclosure. Same stuff as the others before it. Now we're going to go down to 12. Now 12, we're in a seriously hazardous location area. Okay, enclosures constructed without knockouts. So when you print this out, this out you're going to want to highlight without knockouts for indoor. Does it say outdoor? It does not. Indoor without lock nuts. Knockouts. Knockouts are places where you can just punch the hole out and you put a piece of conduit in the bottom. Okay. Pretty against uh, access to houses parts to provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of solid foreign objects, fallen dirt, circulating dust, lint, fibers, and flyings. So it's dust tight. Okay. And to provide a degree of protection with respect to harmful effects of equipment due to the ingress of water dripping and light splashing. But this is the first or one of our first hazardous locations, a 12 is a hazardous location. Okay, a 12K, enclosures constructed without knockouts again for indoor use to provide a degree of protection, to provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against egress of solid foreign objects, fallen dirt, circling dust, lint, fibers, and flying, and to provide a degree of protection with respect to harmful effects of the equipment due to the ingress of water, dripping, and light splashing. Okay, how is that different from 12? When we had 12, do we have a K before? Do we not have a K before? I guess we didn't have a K before. Okay, so we might have to find out how 12K is different from 12. Okay, and then we have type 13. Not so far. I get it yet. Or maybe I won't. Okay. And again, to protect against stupid people touching the contacts, provide a degree of protection of the equipment inside the enclosure against ingress of foreign falling objects, falling dirt, circulating dust, lint, fibers, and flines, and provide a degree of protection against the harmful effects of equipment due to ingress of water dripping, light splashing, and provide a degree of protection against the spraying, splashing, and seepage of oil and non-corrosive coolants. Oil is our new item, right? Dripping and light splashing, and to provide a degree of protection against the spraying, splashing, and seepage. So it's oil tight. It's oil tight, or somewhat oil tight. Now we have a chart of where we can use these things, okay? And if you look at the left, and look at the right, you can see the ones where the X is, that means that you can use that equipment in that kind of an area. And it goes on down to comparison of specific, specific applications of enclosures for outdoor non-hazardous locations. Very good thing to look over. I would strongly suggest you look that over. Did I just go up when I think I went down? Okay, and here we have this chart now uh, to IEC 605-529 enclosure classification designations of IP. Well, I wouldn't worry about that too much. 
and we have a little bit of reference information down here at the bottom. Now I want to teach you something, and I need a new page. How am I going to get that? Let me hit pause. All right, let's talk about the National Electrical Codes Article 500, which is hazardous locations, and we're going to talk about Class 1 Division 1 areas. The Class 1 Division 1 area is an area that has flammable or explosive vapors that are always there. Vapors is the key phrase and always there. A class 1 division 2 area is an explosive or flammable vapor that are present sometimes. So let's go to class 2. A class 2 area. I lost my writing. Excellent. All right. We have... Why is it doing this? You know what? I think it'd be quicker to type this out. Okay, so now we're going to talk about NEC hazardous locations and um, the different classifications. A class one division one area is an area that has explosive or flammable vapors that are always there. Very simple. Vapors that are always there. Class one division two, explosive or flammable vapors that are there sometimes, that are sometimes there. A class three, I mean class two division one area is an explosive or flammable dust that are always present. That's class two, division one is a dust that's always present. Class, I have this wrong. This should be class two. So we need to change this slide. I'm not sure if we can do that. No, not without changing. Let me hit pause a second. Okay, I only took a second to correct that slide. A class two, division two is an area where we have a an explosive flammable, explosive or flammable dust that is sometimes present. And then finally, I've told you about what flyings are. A class three division one area is a special classification area. I told you about grain silos that blow up occasionally. They are class three division one areas. And in grounding and bonding, that's a special location. It's so sensitive to fire and explosion that you do not have any equipment grounded around this area, which is an unusual situation because a ground could create a spark. Okay? Okay, so an explosive fell fiber or flying that are always present. Remember, you throw it up in the air and it floats back to the ground very slowly. It's surrounded by a lot of oxygen and air. It might be very explosive. So that's a very special area. Remember that some of the enclosures are especially rated for fibers and flyings. Okay? And finally, I know you can guess this one. Class 3, Division 2. I've got an incorrect slide again. I'll fix that later, but it should be Class 3, Division 2 area is an explosive flammable fiber flying that is there sometimes. So there we have the whole entire information about the classifications of areas. And you might be seeing that on some quiz sometime soon. So I would look that slideshow over sometime soon. And uh, any questions on that? Yes, sir. Class 2, Division 1 is a dust. Class 2 is a dust. Division 1 means it's always there. Okay. Any other questions? Always fibers or flyings. Class 3 is fiber or flyings. Class 1, Class 3, Division 1 is fibers or flyings that are always there, like a grain silo where they're they have ground grains that are being taken up an elevator and it's always falling off the elevator and it's always creating a dust. That's a very hazardous location. Very hazardous location. It is illegal to ground a crane above that. It's illegal to ground a lot of the equipment around that. All right. I'm going to stop that there.
And we'll have another one in just a minute.